Hey guys, Ryan Lutz here. Thanks for stopping by. And today I wanna to discuss the settings that I run in my Tekken RX-8 Gen 3 ESC. Uh, all the settings that I use to make my car easier to drive, but still have all the performance necessary to compete against the top guys in the world. So hopefully these will help you to dial in your setup as well and make it easier for you to drive. So first off, we're gonna take a look. And one of the considerations we always have is the motor. So there's two primary motors that we use for the Tekken system. We either have the 1900, which is what I primarily run, 1900 kV, or they also have a 2050. Now the 2050 has a little bit more of a torque feel, a little bit more bottom end uh, punch to it. Uh, I prefer the 1900, it just has a smoother pull everywhere, and I feel like it's just what I use 99% of the time. And actually, the only other time I'll use something different is when I happen to use the 1950, which is a smaller can. It saves about 50 grams of weight on the motor itself. And I will couple that with the Protec RC 4800 shorty and low profile packs. So these also will save about 60 grams compared to the Protec 6400s, which are just shorty. So the low profile and the less milliamps, it's a little bit less weight. So you could save about 160 grams in your car if you always happen to run on a smaller track, if you always happen to run, say, six minutes or less in your qualifiers, or if you're really easy on the throttle. And if you want to try for a really lightweight setup, you can definitely try that. Now, if you are doing a lot of 10-minute mains, even 20-minute qualifiers, and you're on larger tracks, or you just want to make sure that you got the power when you need it all the time, you know, I run the Protec 6400s, and they work great for 99% of the applications. So once we get beyond the battery, and then I have, you know, you can check out my battery placement. Now, the reason I pretty much always run the batteries to the rear is I'm trying to get a closer weight balance on my nitro buggy with my e-buggy compared to my nitro buggy. So with my battery all the way back on this vehicle, I get about a 50-50 weight balance compared to my nitro, which is about 48-52. So I'm trying to get it to where I can, you know, run the same setup on both cars and relatively have a similar feel. Now next, we're gonna jump into the speed control settings. And so what we do for that is we have the, the Tekken hot wire and the hot wire, I have a little Bluetooth function. I can just plug it right into the fan port, pops right up on my phone and I can adjust it at the track. If you're ever at a track with me, feel free to come up and I'll be glad to throw my setup on there for you. And some of the settings that we have, our first set is the cell count which I leave at the 4S LiPo. Uh, generally, if you're running 4S, having the 4S, you can adjust the voltage at the end. I do bump that down to like a 3.1, 3.2, just in case I do bring it low if I need it at the end of a long main or something, if I just want to finish. Uh, but if you want to be a little bit safer, you can put it at 3.4, 3.5, and just protect your battery and your equipment. Uh, next, we have the BEC voltage. I do that at 7.4, so that way your servo and the fan port are getting the 7.4 volts. And I do this because it makes it the same as the nitro buggy. You could lower it to six if you just run electric and you just wanna keep it a little easier to drive, a little less twitchy. A lot of the servos nowadays are really fast and you don't necessarily need that full speed steering. And sometimes we actually turn that down on the radio. But to keep it the same as my nitro, I run the 7.4 on that setting. Next, we have the motor direction. Now I leave that at normal on this car. That's gonna depend on your diff which way they're flipped in your car and which orientation your motor is. So just pay attention to that when you first calibrate your radio. Uh, motor type, I do BLDEL, brushless delay. I actually like reverse. I know we're not allowed to use it in racing. I don't use it in racing, but I like to mess around with it at the start of a race or you know in the warm up laps. I like messing with all the other pros. They're all like, oh, you got reverse in your car. And it's just nice if you're out there on a practice day and you need to use some reverse for some reason, it's just nice to have it. And what I'll do is later on in the settings, I'll show you I have a delay of a little bit over one second or about a second. That way I don't actually bump it during a race. Next, we have the fan. I put it on auto. I don't run a fan in the winter. In the summer, if it's hot, I do run a fan. Uh, if I'm driving really hard, you know, I just want to keep the stuff as cool as possible to keep the performance the same throughout my whole run. And then data remote erase, I have that off. I don't actually know what that setting really does, but I haven't really felt a need to figure it out yet. Uh, next page, we have drag brake. I leave that at about 10. I do like drag brake. I like when I start to let off the throttle that it kind of starts to drag it down a little bit. 
I don't want it to have like a free free rolling effect. So I want it to help me go through like the slow speed corners. I like to, if I don't have to, maybe I don't have to use the brakes. I can just use the drag a little bit to slow me down just that little bit that I need to, to hit that corner just how I want to. Uh, next we have brake minimum. I put that about zero. So that is how much brake is applied at 1% of throttle. So if you're just creeping onto that throttle, how much is applied? So I want it to be as smooth and come in as easy as possible just to make the car again easier to drive for these off-road surfaces that we're running on. Brake strength. So after watching Adam Drake's video, we did a great video on this as well. Um, I've tried his brake setup and I really do like it. So I went with the brake strength of 50. I used to run 80, so I went down to 50. And then uh, we'll jump to brake frequency really quick. And I went down to two. Uh, to me, this was still a little bit too aggressive uh, top and bottom. So I actually went to three on the frequency. Now the frequency, so that's 3000. Generally, uh, the frequency is your pulse width. It's kind of like the voltage or the limiting effect that it's giving every certain amount of time. So the higher the number, as you get up to like the eight, nine, 10, 11, 12,000, that width is longer and it's gonna kind of smooth it out, but it's gonna be different from your high speed braking to your low speed braking. So you might get it dialed at the high speed, but then on low speed, you also don't have enough brakes. You're trying to stop and you can't stage the car. You can't slow down when you're you know, really battling with somebody. If they have something happens or they tag a pipe, you can't slow down enough. And I've had that issue in the past because I ran the 80 brake strength and had brake frequency about eight, nine, 10 thousand, and that would happen. So with this new setup with the 50 brake strength, and the 3000 on the frequency is what I ended up with. It definitely gives a better feel top and bottom end. I have both that stop pretty well. And similar to Adam on my Fataba 10PX USLE radio, I put my brake strength about 80 on the end point for the radio as well. And with my previous setup with the 80 brake strength and the speed control, I would actually be at about 70 on the radio. So you can see it's not, it doesn't linearly go together. So I think that brake strength like Adam was talking about at 50 does kind of really smooth out the brakes and going to about 80 on the radio seems like a good spot to balance your top and bottom end your high speed and low speed braking uh, next i jumped over push control push control is kind of your opposite of what drag brake is so if you for whatever reason would want to let off the gas in the car to actually like freewheel a little bit more and coast a little bit more you could have push control on uh, then you would not run drag brake you'd have that at zero I don't like that, I like the drag brake, so that's why I have push control at zero. And then we'll jump back to active drag. So active drag is kind of as you're pulling the throttle and you start to let off. As soon as you start to let off past that 100%, the active part means that it's gonna to start to apply some of that drag. It's gonna to start to bring it down to that power level right away. Versus if you have active drag off, it's not gonna apply any drag brake until you're off the throttle, zero throttle, or you're into the brake. So, I like that feel, so like if I'm dropping down to 80%, I want to drop down to that 80% of throttle. It's gonna, it's gonna help really modulate the brakes and that feel as you're letting off the throttle. RPM brake, I have that set at two. I kind of leave that at the factory. Uh, what I've seen from the Tegan videos is that that RPM brake, the higher you go, uh, that will actually allow you to have more low speed braking. So possibly with that 80 brake strength that I was talking about before, and uh, like nine or 10,000 frequency to get that top end braking how I liked, possibly going higher on that brake, RPM brake, say like the five, six, seven, maybe that would have helped bring in that bottom end brake. That is something I should go out and try and test out when I get some more time. But as of right now, I did like that setup that Adam had. I left the RPM brake at two. Next page, we'll go to the throttle profiles. Now here's where I think I might be able to help uh, teach Adam something possibly. So torque level, I have that at six. Uh, looser tracks, you can go down. Torque level is kind of like your bottom end punch. So think of the nitro guys, you want that bottom end torque. But if you're spinning wheels and everything and you just can't seem to be smooth off the line, you might want to drop that down a little bit. Uh, I like six uh, in truck, in the trucks with the 2000 kV motor and the 4S setup, they really are overkill on power. So the trucks I'll actually run five or four, but in buggy I've seen to like six. I think to me five or four is too soft and possibly why, we'll explain that in a minute, why I'm higher than Adam on that. Now the throttle minimum, I have that at one. Uh, basically that's when that 1% of throttle, how much throttle is being applied at that 1%. So I like it to come in as smooth as possible. So right around that one to zero is where I leave that. Neutral width is kind of what I consider like dead band. So 
how far you pull the trigger before it starts to engage on the on the speedo and, and the wheel start to spin. So the smaller that number, the closer to that tip of movement is where it's going to be. So five gives you just a little bit. And even if you're at a high number, I jumped it all the way to like its max numbers to see, and it was it just gave like an extra two or three millimeters before it would start to engage. So depending on what kind of radio you use, if you use a lower end radio, you might have to have a little bit higher number there. I think factory is 25. Uh, but if you're at a high end radio with the Fatabas, uh, you can run a lot lower number and have that throttle be right at the tip of that trigger. Now reverse speed, I leave that at 34. I, like I said, I do have reverse in the car just for playing around, for practice, whatnot. And 34 is fine just to get the car turned back around. And then reverse delay. I put that at one second. It comes at 0.8 factory. And I feel like that could be a little too early. So I like to delay that a little bit in case I ended up like double pumping a brake at, during the race. I, I don't want it to engage. So I want it, but I don't want it to come in when I don't want it to. Uh, next we have throttle frequency. So again, on the frequency, it's kind of, let's see, it's, uh, it's like the pulse width, the on off signal that's going to the motor. And the lower the number, the closer that pulse width is to each other. So it's more aggressive. And then the higher the number, actually it's like 10, 12,000, uh, that pulse width is further apart, it smooths it out. So if you're at six, six is that midway point between the two, that's your most linear curve. So I actually run about six on the throttle frequency. I might drop it to like a seven or eight if I really do, I'm on a lo looser track and I want to smooth it out just that little bit more. Um, but overall, that's about where I stick on that. Uh, and then the other thing about that frequency, if you go really high on it, it really smooths out the bottom. If you're at like 10,000, 11,000, the bottom will be smoothed out, but then it catches up at the end. So then you're, you're deeper in the trigger, it might start to ramp up a little bit faster. So if you have a jump section that you're really time, trying to time properly, it could mess with that. If you're like in the, that 70 to 80% throttle range, it could ramp differently if you're just a little bit different. So consider that. And then throttle profile, leave that at three. And then here's where the, the difference I have in the throttle. So on timing profile, I actually go with custom one profile. So timing profile one that Adam uses, it has five degrees of timing in it. If you go to a custom profile, you can actually program the timing to whatever you want it to be. So I go to custom profile one and I turn the timing advance to zero. Now I don't generally like running timing. If I feel I'm on a track where I need more top end, if I need more power, I simply generally go up in pinion gear and I'll just do that for the bigger tracks I have to go on. Now, the only time I'd add timing is if I'm on, I'm already kind of maxed where I think I want to be on my, uh, you know, gearing, or on my, yeah, on my gearing, and I just want that a little bit more on the top end of the straightaway, then I might go and add a couple of degrees of timing. Now, the thing is, the timing, if you, if you run that standard profile one, and you have the five degrees of timing advance, factory, the RPM settings, that five degrees is distributed into your power band between 5,000 and about 20,000 RPM. So you have that being layered in throughout your throttle. If you have it off, you have a much smoother throttle, I believe. So that's why I try to leave it at custom one, turn the timing off, so I have no artificial things being added into my throttle, and it can be a little bit smoother, I feel. Now, as far as like your final drive ratio, uh, Kyosho now has the mod 8.8 .8 gearing. And so I've been running 58 spur and 20 pinion. Now that gave me a final drive uh, of 9.59. Um, our internal in our, in our diffs is 43.13, which is a 3.307. Now I have at the last few tracks felt I'm a little bit underpowered on the straightaway and we have not had a bigger pinion. So we finally got a bigger pinion, and so now I'm gonna be running 5821 most of the time, and that'll give me a final drive of 9.13. And in the past, when I ran um, our standard gearing, I ran 4617, and with a mod one gearing, and that was an 8.95. So the smaller that final drive number, kind of like the more power you have. And unlike nitro, where if you go up in a clutch bell, it gives you more top end, but it takes away from the bottom. I feel like when you go up in a pinion or go down in a spur on an electric car, it's just more power throughout the whole range. So I feel like that top end for the pro, you're gonna be at around nine as your final drive. And then if you're on smaller tracks, you know, like a nine five to a 10 is probably okay. And then if you're just still getting used to driving, still a little bit newer, you know, you might be in like a 10 and a half or so range. 
but I feel like if you don't want to use timing and you want to make it all in your gearing, then probably being in that 9 to 9.5 range is probably ideal for most tracks. So hopefully that helps you guys. I hope that gets you dialed in with your speed control. Absolutely any race that I'm at, that you are at, feel free to come up. I'd love to program it for you. Take a look at your settings if you haven't done it already. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. I have also in the comments, or not in the comments, but in the description below, I have all of Tekin's um, kind of explanations of all these different programs and kind of what they do. I took them from their videos. You can also watch each of their videos, which they did a great job on. So this hopefully shows you my full setup, why I run it, and I hope it helps. So you all have a great day, and we'll see you at the racetrack. Enjoy RC. Bye-bye.